One of my, this is my new guest, my new favorite guest. Not that he wasn't always, but you know, well. Kale Calhoun, all for Tennessee. And the reason why is because he gave me, Marky e. Bill, some props on his website uh, back on Friday when I had called out the Vol Caravan's uh, demise as being a way to really duck the media as well as to duck the uh, fans most of them would just be going out there dressed head to toe in orange and saying, welcome, Kelly Harper. Uh, good luck to you, Jeremy. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, caravan. And uh, yeah, the idea that Smokey's going to try to visit all 95 ca uh, counties is pretty uh, unsatisfying in a as a replacement. Truthfully, what do you think of the decision for the ball caravan to go away at least for a year? Well, and, and like we were both talking about, it, 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 it's so insulting to uh, to me who to, to many of us who cover the ball that people care about a meeting across the state with a mascot and cheerleaders. Oh, yeah. it's just going to have the exact same effect because you know when people follow Tennessee football and Tennessee basketball. The number one thing they care about is Smokey. Like, who yeah. thinks about that? And, I mean, they would have been better off just being honest and canceling the whole thing altogether. I than yeah. Do something like this. Yeah, I totally agree. And I mean, to my way of thinking, I mean and such. I was at the last one and, you know, had the chance to uh, kind of really learn what I thought some of the coaches were all about. Uh, I met the SID at Tennessee who, you know, usually I have a little bit of a wariness of sports information directors, Caleb Calhoun of all for Tennessee, but uh, yeah, it was very engaging to me and all that. So that was very appreciated. Uh, and certainly, like I said, I got in a dog costume in, I don't know, sick, Sequatchie County or something is just absurd to me. And it's an insult, I think, to both the fans and the media's intelligence. And I really appreciate you uh, backing me up on that because there are some fanboys in the media who have actually uh, taken the whatever Tennessee says is right uh, mantra. This until after I wrote it on Friday, but you wonder if there's some infighting going on that we don't know about with the administrative people because let's not forget one of the infamous things that are. One of the things that is cited for Johnny Majors' downfall in 1992 was apparently he had bought himself a lot of bad publicity on the caravan complaining about his contract mm -hmm. going across the state and publicly calling them out. So, you know, is there a caravan and call it out? I mean, you, you wonder if there's something in there. Uh, I mean, that's a good point. I have talked to Majors about his contract as well from that situation. I mean, you know, and he's very adamant about it. And he'll say, hey, they, I had a extension and then I had my heart bypass surgery. And my successor, he would never call Fulmer by name. Then proceeded, you know, he won the three games. And then I remember Majors came back and the Vols lost three straight. And that was it. And he then went to some boosters and... Johnny Majors, and it was the wrong thing to say at the wrong time, even if he was right about it. And, you know, that's the thing. And I still like Majors, and, you know, anyhow, that's what happened. You've got a good point. I'm going to throw this A there in, in Knoxville. I got to tell you the truth. I didn't come out thinking that this told a joke, uh, you know, just a, it, it wasn't anything blue or anything like that, but he didn't get it. And I was like thinking, this is the guy that didn't know what asparagus was until he was 32 years old. That's the perception I got of Pruitt. And I was like, this is the leader? And you saw how, hey, the media, the coordinator, it was kept very tight-lipped. And I think this is extremely disturbing what's going on at UT. To me, it's, what are you hiding? That's a good point. 
And yeah, that's one of the things, exactly, that is a great point. And you're also telling it in East Tennessee, which if there's any place in the world that's Trump country, it's East Tennessee. So, I mean, what can I tell you? This is why we have Vito, uh, excuse me, we have Caleb Calhoun, Vito Stolino will join us at line to begin the show and I said you know the offensive line in my opinion is where the football team is going to sink or swim uh, and there are so many question marks I went on rlads.com to prepare for my morning monologue and they don't even have a right tackle listed now that Drew Richmond has gone on to uh, Southern California uh, there is, you know, potential. I mean, if Trey Smith can come back from the uh, blood clots in his lungs, if Brandon Kennedy can uh, come back from his injury that limited him to one game, if Darnell Wright Smith did, let's say. But I don't know. What, tell me what your best case scenario is for the offensive line. What your worst case scenario is for the offensive line. Well, best case scenario, I think, is that. Um, Donald Wright is as good as advertised. Brandon Kennedy gets fully healthy, and then Trey Smith can return mm-hmm. and get back to himself. And that Wanya Morris is as good as he looked at the three. Um, if all four of those things happen, then you've got a really good shot at a surprisingly good offensive line. Um, worst case scenario is obviously Donald Wright the bust. Uh, Brandon Kennedy can never get right again at center. Trey Smith doesn't return, and then or he does return, and he's just not because of two years off, he's just not what he was. Um, And then nobody takes a step forward after last year. Um, So I I will say this, um, able to work his way into the starting rotation as an early enrollee, and he would have been a five-star across all services had he not suffered an injury Mm -hmm. down the stretch of last year. But even with that, he looked fully healthy in the spring. So I think that's a big plus for them. Um, I think, again, the offensive line is very much in wait and see mood wait and see mode, but I agree. I mean, it's going to be the, the offensive line is key. Another big advantage we realize is, it, is the offensive line. So you could expect him to probably help out a little bit on there, too. And I think that'll be really helpful for the ball going forward. I mean, they can't, but again, I don't know if it can be worse than last year, but I, I don't know how many, how, how, I don't know how much of a leap it will make this year yet. Yeah, who, who do you like at uh, right tackle? Who would A lot of people like what Eli Wolf was doing spring practice, you know. I mean, Quentin Dormady 